Hi, my name is Rob Inderbo. I'm a firefighter with Shakopee Fire. And we get a lot of questions about how we keep ourselves safe when we have to enter a burning building. There's a lot of gear that we have to put on in order to keep ourselves safe from the heat of a fire, also to protect ourselves from the smoke that is given off from a fire. When a fire burns today, it burns a lot of material that gives us smoke that's very poisonous to us, including uh, things that can give us cancer. So I'm going to show you today how we get dressed up in our outfit to keep ourselves safe when we have to go into a burning building. When a call comes in, no matter what we're wearing, we come to the truck and we get ready with this type of gear. First thing we do is our duty boots have to come off. So we have zippers in our duty boots. All firefighters at our station have zippers in them so we can remove them very, very quickly. As you may know, fire can double in size every moment or every minute. So a small fire doubles and doubles and doubles. So the quicker we get there, the quicker we put out the fire. So time, speed, little shortcuts, very important to us. Now we put on our firefighting boots and our big firefighting boots made out of leather, they won't burn, and we also put them with our pants. These are called bunker pants. Our bunker pants and our boots are put together for a reason, so that we can get ready quicker. The reason they're called bunker pants, or this is all called bunker gear, is goes back a long, long ways when firefighters would sleep at the fire station, uh, full-time fire departments would sleep at the station, they would put their gear by their bunk where they slept. So in the middle of the night, when they wake up, they just step into their gear, called bunker gear. So it's kept by their bunk. The next piece of equipment I put on goes over my head, like that. And it looks like something you would use in the wintertime to stay warm. And actually, it's not. I'll get back to this more in a moment. The next thing is our firefighter coat, our bunker coat. It's made out of... Uh, couple different layers. It has an outside layer to protect me for keep the water off from me. It has an inside thermal barrier um, which keeps me safe from the heat of a fire. Made out of Kevlar. So it's a uh, pretty strong material. And Velcro to cover up everything. I have to basically be covered head to toe so that I don't have any skin exposed to the heat when I go inside a fire, okay? The next thing I have that I put on is my face mask. My face mask is how I get to breathe good clean air when I go inside a smoky environment, when I go inside a smoky building. You'll see that a firefighter, I'm gonna put on a backpack here in a moment. The backpack is filled with air. That air has to have some way for me to breathe it. So it goes through a hose and it comes up here to my mask and it hooks in here to my face mask and that's how I breathe good clean air when I go inside a fire. In fact, the next thing I will put on is the backpack. So this is the air pack or the backpack as we call it. And this goes on, it's called the self-contained breathing apparatus or SCBA for short. It's a lot like a scuba setup would be, except this is made for air, not for going underwater. So we put this on. The backpack, the bottle is where the air is kept. The hose is where the air comes and breathes up here to my, or delivers to my mouth and my nose. How I get it to my mouth and my nose is via this mask. So I'm going to put my mask on. I'll turn on my microphone so you can hear me a little better. So this one piece of equipment makes firefighters look very different because it covers up our face and our head. It makes us very strange looking to children. We don't want that. We don't want to look strange. So we take this whole outfit into schools and we try to introduce it to children at a very young age and show them that we're not scary. We're still firefighters underneath here and we're there to help people. So getting back to the outfit, now this hood comes into play. So the hood comes up and over, and it covers my ears and my head. Again, made out of a Kevlar material, supposed to be, keep the smoke off from my body. Next is my fire helmet, which protects my head from falling objects. This gets strapped on and tightened up. 
And the final thing I will put on to cover up is my firefighter gloves. They're made mostly out of leather, but a combination of materials, especially on the inside, are nice and soft and very solid on the outside. Also lined with a biohazard protection like a glove, like a medical glove on the inside. So, now I'm covered from head to toe. There's no skin exposed, so I will be safe from the heat of a fire. One more thing I do have to do before I go in is I have to hook up my air. This makes us sound very funny. So I turn on my air pack. That's got a beep so I know that it's working properly. And then when I put this on my face, you're going to hear me breathe the air that's in my backpack. Okay? I will not be breathing the air here. I'll be breathing the air that's in my tank. And this is how we would go into a building, and this is how people see us a lot of times. Imagine for a small child, it is pretty scary to see this and hear all this coming at them. So we try to teach kids that we're friendly, we're there to help, and if you see a firefighter, come up to us, don't run away, and don't ever hide from a firefighter. Now the gear, again, makes me sound funny, it's quite warm. It weighs about 45 pounds when I have everything on. So it adds that much weight to me. And you hear the beeping once in a while from my backpack. That's a safety feature built in to keep me moving. If I stand still for 28 seconds, it's going to start to check with me. It's going to beep, it's going to light up, and it's going to say, hey, Firefighter Rob, are you okay? And if I move, then it waits and checks on me again in 30 seconds or so. If I don't move, it will continue to get louder and louder and louder until my firefighter uh, brothers and sisters hear it and will come and help me. Thanks again for joining us for this uh, video blog and uh, again thank you for your continued support.